Hey everyone, welcome to This Prepared Life. I'm Allison, and today we are gonna be talking about how you can identify if a food is good for long-term storage. Welcome to my homestead kitchen. It is a gorgeous day here in North Idaho, and we are gearing up for winter. And I tend to store food on a really seasonal basis. In the summer, I am more focused on gardening and canning and dehydrating. Dehydrating, I've got some pear fruit leather in the dehydrator. Um, whereas in the winter, I tend to focus more on my long-term food storage and dry goods. So today I wanted to share with you a couple ways that you can determine whether a food is good for your long-term storage. I have three layers in my food storage pantry. I have my kitchen, which is the foods we are eating right now. I have my short-term layer, which is our grocery store. It is where I restock my kitchen cabinets. It's the things in our freezers. And then I have my long-term layer, which I also refer to as my SHTF layer. And everything in my long-term layer does rotate into my kitchen at some point or another, anywhere between two and 10 years. But all of the foods in my layer three, my long-term layer, are foods that are good for long-term storage. And these are foods that my family already eats, sometimes just in a different form. Let's look at a couple things that you can do to determine if a food is going to be good for your long-term layer. First thing that you wanna think about when you are putting food into a bucket or a mylar bag or getting that stocked into your long-term layer is the moisture content of that food. Dry goods store best long-term. Foods with moisture in them are going to mold over time. They are not going to last long-term. So for long-term storage, you need a moisture content below 10%. In the case of dehydrated foods, if a food is pliable, it does not have a moisture content below 10%. It needs to snap or crumble or be crisp. The next thing that you want to consider when asking yourself, is this food good for long-term storage, is its oil content. Oily foods do not store well long-term because oil goes rancid over time. If you are unsure about the oil content of a specific food, the easiest thing to do is to search it. Type it in to whatever your favorite search engine is and ask, are oats oily? Is brown rice oily? Things like that. And then you're gonna gather the information that you need to decide if this food is going to be good for your long-term pantry. I have some of the foods out here that I keep in both my kitchen pantry, my short-term layer, and my long-term layer because they are great for long-term storage. And in my kitchen pantry, things are usually in jars and I am refilling these jars from like a bucket or from a Mylar bag, depending on what the item is. Some of the foods that I have here that are great for long-term storage are lentils. Uh, these are nine grain flakes, which is, um, it's rolled oats and wheat and things like that, but it's a cereal. I also use this to make granola, but this is a great item for long-term storage. I have a bucket of oats here. Oats are an excellent item for long-term storage. I have red beans and pinto beans. Beans are great for long-term storage. And then I have popcorn. Popcorn is um, we go through a lot of popcorn. We eat it for snacks. We make caramel corn and pop popcorn is actually a really good long-term storage food. These are some of the foods that I keep in my long-term layer and how you can determine if the foods that you want to keep in your long-term layer are good for food storage. Does it have a moisture content below 10% and what does its oil content look like?